Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Creative Crossover. This is a show where I interview somebody working in the creative field and have a conversation with them about what they do, how they do it, and more importantly, why they do it. So before we get into today's show, as always, if you could connect with me on social media, that will be ace. It's at Jack Spedding, which is J-A-K-S-P-E-D-D-I-N-G. Uh, just reach out, tag a few people who you think would be interested in the show, or you think you would make good guests that you'd be interested in listening to. That would be absolutely amazing for helping us grow the show over the coming months. Anyway, into today's guest, it's Lisa Wilkinson from Geminist Designs. Hi, Lisa, and welcome to the show. Just to start, can you tell me a little bit about who you are and what it is you do, please? Hi, yeah, I'm Lisa Wilkinson from Geminist Design. Um, I specialise in logos and branding. Um, that that covers sort of exhibition designs, vehicle signage, uh, anything that you can basically put a graphic on to make your business stand out. Yep, cool. So first up, we're going to have a quick fire round just so that we can get to know you a little bit better. So okay. f- first off, iPhone or Android? iPhone. iPhone. Cool. Uh, Netflix or YouTube? Ooh, uh, YouTube. YouTube. Cool. Have you watched anything good on there? What do you sort of use it for? Um, I use it for tutorials, uh, podcasts, all that kind of thing. Um, so basically anything I don't know or um, there's a couple of people I follow for business advice, all that kind of thing. So I, I generally watch a lot of that. So if I'm working... I have my iPad at the side of me and I, I just have it on play um, just so I can listen to it in the background. Yeah, yeah, I'm much the same. Anything that I can't do, I always, uh, YouTube seems to be my new Google, I think. It's uh, I know. it's uh, crazy. But anyway, uh, work hard <laughs> or play hard? Definitely work hard. I need to start being able to play hard, but no, it's definitely work hard at the minute. Cool. Uh, text or call? Uh, text. Text, any specific reason? Um, I don't know. I think I'm just more comfortable behind the screen, and that includes <laughs> when texting. <laughs> yep, yep. No, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, love or money? Definitely love. Nice one. Book or audio book? Um, I'd probably say audio book purely because my mind wanders too much when I start reading. I start thinking about other things when I should be concentrating on what I'm reading. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Have you been listening to anything good at the moment? Um, I haven't actually. Um, I was actually thinking about that the other day, um, looking for some new books. So, yeah, any advice for them my way? Mm, is it where you log into your Audible account and you've got like seven credits and you can just go crazy? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Cool. So what would you say is the best thing that you own? Uh, well, I'm a complete Apple geek, so probably all my Apple gear. So that's... Uh, if I had to name one thing at the minute, it would probably be my new laptop. I've just bought the new iBook. Uh, sorry, MacBook Pro. Cool. The iBook's going back quite a way, isn't it? Yeah, it's very sweet. Very nice. Mm, yeah, <laughs> nice. I've just read the um, the Johnny... It's not an autobiography. Is it a biography? The Johnny Ive um, biography. Autobiography. I don't know which one it is. Have you read that one? The right. designer. Like the, no. the creative ID behind Apple. That's quite interesting how the how all the different products sort of came to light and how it worked with the engineering side. And it's quite interesting oh, right. to sort of dive below because I'm the same. I'm an Apple geek. Like everything I own is Apple basically now. Yeah, um, yeah. And just like diving below all the little decisions, little things that they've oh. introduced, sort of how you lift your laptop up, things that you don't really think about, but things they took No, but, but stuff months. like that, that's, that's the kind of things we think about though. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's- that sounds that sounds interesting. Actually, I might look for that one. Cool. What's what would you say is the best thing that you don't own? What I don't own. Mm, what's the um, goal? At the minute, I don't own a nice holiday. Which, to be <laughs> honest, I would actually love yeah. this December. Like, yeah. Get rid of this cold weather. Mm. <laughs> cool. So going back, take me through your creative journey. Where did it all start for you? Um, well, I was always creative as a kid. Um, I literally walked around with a sketchbook in my hand um, constantly, wherever I went. Nice. Um, I always had it. Um, I was always drawing Disney characters and copying Garfield and things like that. I was probably oh, showing right, my cool. age now, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I started off sketching and then obviously I went through school. Um, I always did really well in arts. My my art teacher put me in through a, to a competition to win um, a pair of Joe Bloggs jeans. If you can remember Joe Bloggs, this right. probably wow. from your time, actually. Mm. And uh, anyway, I won that. 
um, left college, uh, sorry, I left school and decided that I'd go to art college, but I wasn't really sure what direction I was going to go in, um, whether it be digital or I actually liked photography, um, but I got told I was too young to right, take okay. on a, a photography course. So I went on to do A-level fine art and painting. Um, so I did that for two years and then that was over at uh, Ansdor College, which I don't think is there. It's, it's under Blackpool and Fire, but it was at the Ansdor campus. Right, okay. Um, and then from then on, I decided to do further that and go on to another A-level, which was fine art and painting, but also it was a foundation course that um, sort of covered ceramics, textiles, digital, everything really, because I wasn't really sure what direction I wanted to go. All I knew that I could draw and I love painting, but I wasn't really sure, you know, what job I was going to get from that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that for a year. Um, but I, I, I grew up in, in a one parent family, so I saw my mom struggling and I, I got to the second year and I thought, you know what, I need to go get a job. Mm. So I basically worked part time um, at Iceland frozen foods, nice. <laughs> which was yep. hideous, but hey, we all have to start. I somewhere. started in the, uh, the frozen aisle at Tesco, so it's not a bad place to be. Ah, right, okay. Uh, and then I was I was also working uh, in a pub as well. So I was just trying to drum money in while I sort of worked out what I wanted to do myself. Kept going to the job centre and I saw there was a job going for um, an Apple Mac operator and a layout artist. And I thought, oh, brilliant. Don't know what it is, but I'll go for it. Yep. So it was for a junior position. Um, so cut long story short, I got the job. Um, so I was on the drawing boards um using ruby and everything to do all the different colors um redrawing um different logos out illustrations all that kind of thing with the fine pens and then i also did a stint in the dark room which i absolutely hated um so i just i concentrated on um the mac side of things and i'd never been on a mac before um but absolutely loved it fell in love with it and then i basically just worked my way up so I kind of stay with the company for about three years and then I I kind of got to my plateau really that I couldn't learn anymore there. Yeah. Um, I was on the same sort of wage as everybody else, but I wasn't learning anymore and I, I really loved it and I wanted to progress on. So I ended up joining a different agency, um, did the same again, kept working my way up, keep, anything I didn't know, I kept sort of self-teaching myself um because i know a lot of people have got you know they've got graduates and all this kind of stuff but i just didn't at the time when i was at college it it just wasn't a thing then um so i just thought right i need to self-teach myself so i did that i kept working through I, i i think i was in probably about six or seven agencies just kept doing the same thing for about 15 years um teaching myself the things i didn't know um, kept working, went my way up till I couldn't get any further, and then I'd move on. Yeah. And then in 2009, um, I had my daughter Mia, um, and decided that I I don't know whether it was baby brain or what, but hmm. I decided that I would go and work for myself and set up my own business and give it a try. Um, I gave myself a year, and I thought if it all goes wrong and goes a bit tits up, then I'll uh, I'll go you know work for an agency again and keep yep. going as i've been going anyway i was 10 years in business last week congratulations so, yeah thanks so I'm like super chuffed with myself myself and you know i've got some really great customers and yeah really proud that i've managed to do it because i know probably if i was in the same position now as i was back then i probably wouldn't be here and i'd probably still be working at iceland yep. or yeah, something yeah. like that so, yeah, so, so, so ten years in business. What what would you say is your secret? What keeps you uh, What keeps you going? Uh, for me, it's looking after my customers. You know, there's a lot of people who concentrate on you know competing against other agencies. You know, other designers. And for me, that's never been a thing. I just thought, you know, I'm in business. I want to give people a good service, so they want to come back to me. You know, I treat my customers as their friends. Um, and yeah it's just just doing a good job and 
you know, loving what you do. I always said as soon as I start not liking what I do and dreading going to work, then that's it. I'm, you know, I'll call it a day. But, you know, there's not one day that I do anything the same and I keep trying to expand and, you know, bring in different services and things yeah. like that. So it just keeps it fresh and, and, yeah, I just love it. Stay creative. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Can you talk me through your creative process then? So how do you come up with ideas with a client? Uh, well, it's different on every job. Um, but say say if I was doing a logo for somebody, um, I go through what I've got, like a briefing questionnaire. So I'll, I'll run through their business, what the goals are, you know, what they want to achieve from this logo. Do they just want a logo that's pretty? Because obviously that's no use in no an ornament, is it yeah. really? They, you need something that's going to cover what they're trying to achieve. Um, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll find out a bit more about the business. I'll research the company. Like I said, find out the goals, who their customers are. Um, and then I'll, I'll go on to what... It's kind of like a mind mapping, really. So I kind of just write a load of bubbles down of what kind of words just kind of jump into my head when I'm thinking about the business, what, um, you know, what the business is related to, the sector they're in. Yeah. Um, but then I'll try and think a bit out of the box as well, you know, so some like wacky words. It, they might be completely irrelevant, but sometimes I just think it helps with your creativity just to kind of throw a few curveballs in because it might lead to something it might not um and then i go on to sketching so i'll sketch out some ideas based on that kind of mind mapping plan um and then i take sort of the best sort of three um create them up art with art with sorry artwork them up onto the mac um and lay them out in a format obviously that i can prove on to to the customer and then work it from there yeah so there's quite a lot of work that goes into your job before yeah. you even sort of get to the bit that we sort of associate with you before the logo isn't there? there's quite a lot that goes yeah. on before then yeah definitely because obviously you know i'll proof it over to the customer and you know sometimes i'll explain why because if i've done something that's a bit of a way out and i think oh my god well you know what's she done that for yeah you know sometimes the, the thought process they've not thought about it either so i'll just kind of uh, brief it into them and sort of explain you know my thought my whole thought process behind why I've chosen that and say chosen the colors and everything they might have picked colors and when I've researched it, it might be so dead against what you know what they what their company is all about yes yeah um yeah so th and then obviously once they approve them then they get all the files sent in the various different formats so they can use for print and web or social media or whatever because again I see so many logos created that you know, the, a logo that somebody's using on social media and they've literally squished it into a tiny square box. So, you know, it's not even their logo anymore. It's, you know, it's the whole format has been like completely taken out. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so there's quite a lot of thought behind it. Yeah, you mentioned there um, sort of clients supplying you with calls, et cetera, et cetera. Is it quite a collaborative process for you then? Or are you happy to be led Definitely. by a client? Or yeah definitely I, you know I like to work again like when I used to work at the very, various agencies one of the one of my bugbears was the you know a, a customer would come in or the account handler would go out to the customer take a brief half the time the account handler didn't have a creative background yeah um, and, and the, yeah and then they come back and it's kind of a bit like Chinese whispers trying to get that creative brief onto paper and and then, you know, they just sort of say, right, well, that's what you're going with. That's what's right for your company. And it, it never sort of sat right with me that because um, mm. I just think, you know, this person has got their own business. They started this business up for a particular reason. You know, they've got their own vision, um, whether it's right or wrong. You know, I still want to hear it. And I want to work with my customer, you know, to to make sure that they get something that they're going to love and they're going to be proud to show and you know promote in front of their customers or potential customers yeah definitely so, yeah. yeah cool you were you were talking about before you were talking about goals and one of the things that i picked up on your website is you have a nice quote on there which is using imagination and creativity we create de designs with goals in mind so how do you yeah. go about with your client i know you mentioned you had a questionnaire how do you go about defining those goals with a client before you start a project it's just it's just sitting down or you know like talking to them on the phone like we're doing and, and kind of breaking everything down you know because some people you know like for example I, I had a customer the other day and I I met them networking 
just random. I've never never seen this customer before. They came up and I said, oh, you know, I've just heard you do uh, graphic design. So I said, yeah. Uh, and they said, oh, we, we need a flyer doing. So I was like, right, okay. And I was like, what, you know, what do you want the uh, flyer to promote? And they were like, well, we don't know, but all our customers have got flyers, so we know we need one. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and things like that, and it, it's just kind of breaking down that, to, you know, to narrow it down of, right, well, you want a flyer, you know, what are you going to use it for? Is it for special offers? Is it to promote your business? Is it just literally brand awareness? You know, what what do you want it to use it for? Are you, are you exhibiting, you know, do you want something as a giveaway? And it's just breaking down, you know, what the customer's brief is to make sure that they actually do want it. Because, again, I, I don't believe in selling something to somebody that, you know, doesn't need it. They might think they need it and actually they don't. They might possibly need something completely different that they've yeah, not even definitely. thought about. Yeah. So. Yeah, it happens a lot with video that everybody sort of says, to think, oh, we need video as well. Can you do photography and video? And it's what, yeah. what you're going to use the video for. And so we're just going to put it on YouTube. And it works. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not it's going like to do anything latest, then. Yeah, mm. it's like the latest trend, isn't it? Oh, we yeah. need that because it's the latest trend. Well, actually, it doesn't suit your business, so don't bother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how does the branding side, the graphic design side of your business, how does that fit with the website design? Does the sort of creative side of it, does it clash with the technical side, which is building the back end of the website? So do you often start with the back end of the website and then make the creative fit or do you start do you start with the creative and then make the back end fit to the to the brief right um to be fair um i do i used to design websites a lot um and when i started out i was designing bespoke websites um and working with i don't actually develop them myself so i collaborate with uh, a couple of other businesses on the web developing side of things right okay um, so how they would do it is they would kind of give me some kind of structure to work with. So obviously with, with websites being responsive now, that kind of limits the design a, a little bit. So you have to be wary of the fact that, you know, it needs to fit on a mobile phone. It needs to fit on an iPad. And, you know, the iPad can be landscape or it can be portrait. It needs to work. Yeah. So really it's kind of work how i do it is i work collaborative with the web developer and we work together on it so i'll i'll generally sort of sketch out an idea of my thoughts before i even you know artwork anything up go to the developer and sort of say look this is what i'm thinking you know is all this doable and you know uh, is there a better way of doing it and i kind of work like that um to be fair my my speciality is more logos and print design yeah um but yeah if if i am doing websites i'll i'll work collaborative collaboratively with the developer to make sure that it's all going to yeah. sit nicely yeah. the thing the thing is as well with, with websites there's so many different platforms out there like wordpress and things like that it's i think it's got a lot harder for um like web guys nowadays because people are just buying templates and things yeah, like that yeah. and designing on them so like a lot of the time i just generally get asked to design up web banners or to look at somebody's site and sort of say you know um you know can you make this look like prettier which i hate that but yeah yeah uh, you know just more on brand kind of thing so yeah cool yeah. so I've, I've also noticed on your website one of the things that stands out to me is you provide a, a sort of a virtual in-house design team like a white label service have you noticed a shift over the last few years of companies going from having their own in-house design team to using outside agencies such as, such as yourself yeah very much so um so again when i started out i was working for obviously agencies um and when i was obviously when i was there and i kept moving on and there seemed to be a lot more agencies about them but you know people have known who have left agencies like myself and set up by themselves and you know they what they they white label for the people and um like i i white label for quite a few companies now and they're not just design studios there's, there's consultancies um there's an insurance company and everything so a lot of the time i think people you know, if they don't want to hire an in-house designer and start paying wages and obviously pensions yeah, and all yeah. that, it's an easier way of doing is is if I white label for them, I can put them on a retainer account um, that, you know, they can just pick and choose how many hours they want from me. 
Um, and then obviously I, you know, I just, again, I work with them to find out what's, you know, what, what it is they're trying to achieve. If it's just kind of internal work that they're just wanting branding up, then that's fine. Um, or whether they want to kind of sell on my work as their own, like design service, if you will. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it. I have noticed it's it's happening more and more, um, which is great for me in on one respect. But on the other hand, obviously, when I'm white labeling for somebody, it's I keep it all strictly confidential. Yes. You know, I would I would never brand it under the Gemini's name. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, they they kind of promote it. I have to keep shut about it. Yeah. Yeah. So what so. do you think's caused that shift to away from agencies? Um. I don't know, but I, I don't know really. I, I think people are just, they're just trying to save money, I think, mm, aren't they? And yeah. I think a lot of people more, want more work-life balance. So I think the whole stress of employing people, um, like I said, paying wages, paying pensions, all the staff uh, stresses they have. Um, I think some people just, you know, they just want to get away from that. Like for mm. me, it was all all the do's and don'ts and that's why i wanted to kind of move away and do my own thing it's yeah. it's like I, I i was skyping a guy um a couple of weeks ago and he was running an agency in leeds um he rung me up and sort of said can we have a skype call um which i did and we we're on we we're on the call for about an hour and a half and it, basically he was he was running his own studio um and he said he, what he was finding was he was having a lot of restriction on at the designers in house he said so people were contacting him for a certain kind of style whether it be an illustration or or, or logo design or whatever yeah um and if his in-house designers couldn't do it he was having to outsource that work anyway right okay yeah so yeah. he he made the decision decision last year that he basically shut his agency down in leeds and he's working from home and now he's just basically outsourcing all his projects right well um, but he's yeah but he's not just outsourcing them to the uk he's he's literally going on instagram and um searching various designs like i said il il illustrators 3d designers mm. everybody within the creative field and it is basically he's not bothered where they are based in the world he's if he likes some kind of style and if he's doing a project and that style suits, then he will contact the person and he's doing it like that. Yeah, I suppose that's good client side as well, isn't it? Because they get somebody yeah. who's a specialist. Almost agencies now have become almost like a, a dirty word, hasn't it? Where you expect yeah. them, if you're buying photography from them, you expect them to try and cross-sell your video, graphics, rah, rah, rah. Whereas now a yeah, lot of yeah. people are choosing somebody who's very specifically trained in, a, in an area. Um, and then you're getting exactly what you want, I suppose, aren't you? So it's quite a good business model for him, I guess. Yeah. And a lot of the time as well, it's more expensive. Like, obviously, it's going to be more expensive going to an agency. I think a lot of my customers like the fact that I have got agency background for, you know, the 15 years that I was with them. Yeah. Um, and the fact that I've been running my business now for 10 years, they think, well, you know, she must be doing something yeah, right. Yeah, but definitely. obviously, I haven't got the the agency costs because you know i i just work from home office so mm. it suits me a lot of a lot of people don't actually know i work from home office until now obviously on this yep, podcast yep. But there's uh, i think if you've got good broadband and you know the skype there's we transfer there's all those kind of different bits of software and you know there's the internet and things it's it's easy to work from home nowadays yeah it's definitely. a lot easier than it used to be yeah cool you just mentioned briefly back then about 3d branding um so how how do you see the future of graphic design going do you see it going more sort of 3d vr etc etc or do you think there'll always be a place yeah. for yeah definitely definitely um like i've i've tried to get a hub of people who i work with collaboratively you know good people who i can recommend yes um and that's that's something i will be looking at in the future definitely because obviously i think I once, well, it was one of the video, um, YouTube videos I was watching, and he said you should always hire somebody who's better than you. Yeah, um, yeah. And they were on about, you know, all the VR and all that kind of stuff. And I just think, obviously, I can't do it. I could train myself up to do it, but what's the point? There's people who have been in, 
you know, who've got miles more experience than me. And I just think it's, you know, it's another arm that I could offer and, you know, get somebody else, you know, more employment. employment. Like at the minute, I, I like to keep people just within the Lancashire yes uh, yep. you know keep it local but it's not saying that i won't kind of branch out uh in the future cool so, and what do you think the future holds for yourself and for geminus um well hopefully i'll be here in another 10 years yeah <laughs> keeping strong doing a good service um like i said I'd, I'd like to work more remotely um you know sorry work more collaboratively with other creatives um, you know, build a couple more arms to the Geminis brand, like I said, with the 3D, yeah, um, all that kind of thing, uh, and just grow it that way. And like I said, keep keep offering a good service to people that you know people are happy to come back and or recommend me, which at the minute that they, they are happy to do, which is is always a bonus. That's good. Nearly there. What's the one piece of advice <laughs> that you give to someone who's trying to get into your space of work? Um. Just, just stay creative. Try and try and blink yourself out to what everybody else is doing. Yep. I think sometimes, you know, people, other creatives get bogged down by what other creators are doing, yeah, and they definitely. feel inferior. You know, they feel inferior or all that kind of thing. Get your own style. Um, you know, just just stay around anything that kind of gives you creative inspiration. And try and avoid getting in competition with somebody because it's it's not it's not good. At first, it like that was one of the things that kept bogging me down. And when I was first starting out, and I just thought, God, you know, I'm working for my own own company, and there's all these like fabulous agencies out there with fabulous creatives, and you, they're doing miles better work than me, and all mm. that. And then there's one day, and I just thought, well, actually, you know, I have got customers myself who are constantly coming back to me, so yeah, yeah. you know, I must be doing something right. And I, I just, I got to the point that I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to go in competition with anybody else. I'll just got my own style, do my own thing. Uh, you know, treat people the way I want to be treated. Don't rip people off. Um, and just keep learning. You know, I like I said, I, I listen to YouTube. Sorry, I watch YouTube videos a lot. I listen to podcasts. Um, I do need to do more reading, but like I said, my mind wanders a bit too yeah, much yeah. When, I, when I read. Typical creative. Mm. Um, and just, yeah, t- take yourself out, look after yourself. Um, you know, go to art galleries or wh- whatever. Whatever's creative, try different different styles anything really yeah cool well it's obviously working for you so final question <laughs> uh, where can people find you online where's the best place for them to connect with you uh so i'm on all the social media so i'm on instagram twitter linkedin um facebook all of those it's it's all under just jerry design perfect well thank you very much for that lisa you're welcome come and say hi and that's it for episode six of creative crossover i hope you enjoyed that talk there with lisa from geminus designs please do find her online connect if you are a 3d artist 3d branding please connect with her there might be something coming your way Uh, if you could also leave us a a review on itunes or wherever you're listening that would be great helping us to just grow the show a little bit more please do share it with your friends anybody who you think would be good um to come on and have an interview with us that would be absolutely ace and it really does make all the difference thank you very much goodbye